Um, so yeah, again, I apologize. This is this these first couple of lessons are going to take a lot more time than normally I would do for the demo section, just because we're like getting used to all this stuff for the first time. Um, but normally I try to make this part shorter so you guys have more time to work in class. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to go through this code and kind of go line by line and create our first 3D scene. So here's the first line, const scene equals new 3 dot scene. So this line probably looks kind of weird um, if you're used to P5. There's a couple things in here that you may not be familiar with. So let's just talk about them briefly. I'll go into more detail um, in later lessons. Um, oh, this is annoying. It's telling me three is not defined, but I know that three is defined. So can I get rid of this? Uh, no, probably not. I'm just going to ignore it. OK, so const uh, is just a variable declaration. This is similar to var or let. The, different with con the difference with const is that it means that the thing can't change. So um, I'll show you what that means real quick in the browser. Uh, where'd my preview window go? Let's open that up again. Um, so if I say variable x equals 0, and then I want to say x equals 1, I can do that, no problem. If I say const y equals 0, and then say y equals 1, I'm going to get an error. It says you can't assign a new value to a constant variable. And so the reason you do this in code is basically to prevent uh, your code from doing things that it's not supposed to do, like redefine this scene. Um, so you don't actually have to do it this way, but this is generally how um, you would do it if you're not planning on on making the scene do anything else. So we have const, which is just a variable scene. And that's our main scene, which is like a collection of all the stuff that we want to put in our 3JS scene. Then we have the equal sign. And what we're doing here, new may also be something that you haven't seen before. New basically means we're creating a new copy of a three scene. So when I say three dot scene, that's basically referencing 3JS has a scene constructor and that creates a new scene for me. So what I'm gonna do is just log this real quick. So log scene. And so we can see what that looks like. So it looks kind of crazy, but it basically just has a bunch of information about what the scene is, like a position. Quaternion is a big word for rotation. There's also rotation, scale. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff in here. Um, so that's what that looks like. And we're going to use the scene to kind of add everything that we want um, before we render uh, so we know what to draw in our, our project. So you're going to see stuff like this a lot. Basically, we're creating a new copy of the default scene uh, for 3JS. Um, OK, so let's go on to the next line of code. And if you have any questions as I go over this stuff, let me know. So this one is kind of long. And we won't talk a ton about everything in here, but let's just talk about the basics. So we're declaring another const. Um, and it's called camera. So we're creating the camera that gives us the perspective into the 3D world here. Again, we're using new because we're creating a new copy of this. We're using the three library. So we use three dot perspective camera. And perspe perspective camera basically just means that it has a perspective, like it has a distance and a rotation uh, that changes the way the scene looks. This information has to do with like how, how the perspective is created. And um, if, you're, if you've ever taken like a, a camera class, like a VAT class, you might know more about this even than I do. But essentially, it's just like the angle of the perspective, how big the scene is. So this is using the width and height of the actual uh, window of our browser to determine how big to make our scene. Um, and then this is the limit. So how close and how far away from the camera you can be when it to, for it, you to be part of the scene. OK, so we have our scene. We have our camera. Um, and now we have the render. Uh, so I'm going to copy this and put it in here. So the render is just like a fancy word for like the thing that draws stuff on the screen. Um, so in in, in 210, when you're doing P5, this is kind of like the draw function. Um, the render, like the renderer, basically just means drawing stuff. Like when you talk about rendering in like drawing or architecture, you're talking about like actually drawing lines on paper. 
Um, in this context, this is just the thing that decides where to draw everything once we've told it what we want in the scene and you know what color it is and all those different things. So to create a renderer, again, we have const renderer equals new three, and we're using a WebGL renderer here. Um, we can put some options in here. We're not going to do that quite yet. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so we have our renderer. Um, there's a lot of different components in a three in a three D scene. Uh, we're not going to get to all of them today, but we're going to get to like the main like three or four. So a couple things I need to set up with my renderer. So let's copy this line. So we're going to set the size of the renderer, and you'll notice that the size of the renderer matches the size of the camera. Um, so one thing I like to do is usually save these things as variables. I'm not going to do that right now. I might do that next week. But um, what this is doing, again, is just getting the width and height of the of the browser. So when I say window.inner width, that 1,020 pixels is like the actual width available in the browser right now. So if I make this console a little bit smaller, you'll see that width changes. And window.inner height is the same thing except for the height. So all this is really doing is setting the renderer and the camera to match the size of our of our window. Another thing that looks a little bit weird in 3JS is they like to put little spaces in between the parentheses uh, of their functions. So that looks a little bit different from how you might have done things in P5. Um, it's just a convention. I think they think it makes it easier to read. I think it just adds space that you don't really need there. Um, but that's the convention that they use for the 3JS library. So if I'm working with a library, I'll, I'll usually try to follow their conventions. Um, but it doesn't actually change the functionality. If you didn't have a space here, it wouldn't make a difference. It's just a, a visual convention. Um, so one more thing with the render, we want to add the render to our uh, page. Um, so this is kind of like create canvas in P5. It's actually, this is what's actually going to add the canvas to the page. So on our HTML page, we don't actually have a canvas, um, but 3JS adds it for us. And actually that's what we're doing here. So we're saying document.body.append child, which is just regular JavaScript for adding a new element to the page. And then our render has a reference to the DOM element, which is is shorthand for our canvas. So when we actually run this code, if we look inside the can in the elements now, now you'll see there should be a canvas in here. Um, it's not there, so let's refresh. There it is. So there's our canvas that gets added by 3JS. So you can see uh, it's 3JS is the engine. Um, and then the width is the inner width. The height is the inner height. And there's also some styling stuff going on. Um, so yeah, now we actually have a canvas on the screen. We don't really see anything, uh, but it's there. So we can start to add some stuff in there. Um, so yeah, now this is where I want to go over one little uh, thing with our render before we keep going. Um, so with our render, uh, by default, um, it's going to, well, actually, let me see what do we do next. Uh, let's come back to this because I don't think this will make that much sense until we actually do some rendering. So, okay, so we have three of our main components that we need. We have our scene, which is our collection of, you know, everything that we want in our scene. We have our camera, which gives us the perspective on the scene. And we have our render, which actually draws the scene. Um, so now we're actually ready to like do some stuff, but we haven't put anything into the scene yet. So we're going to put some uh, stuff into our scene so that we actually have something to draw. And we'll start really simple. We'll start with a box. Um, and so that's what this section right here is doing. And you might think that's a lot of lines of code to draw a box, um, but uh, we'll go over what all of this stuff is doing um, and why we need all of that. Um, so let's add that in. So we're going to say constant. And for when we create in 3D, we have like two things that make up any object. Um, an object has a geometry and it has a material. And when you put those together, we call that a mesh. Um, and just to go over what that means real quick. Uh, sorry, there's so, there's so many random things that you have to explain 
uh, when you get started with 3D stuff. So um, geometry is like the actual shape of the mesh. So for a box, it's going to be like the six points that make up a cube. And then we are going to kind of like, or it's more than six points. How many points is it? It's six sides, but it's, uh, how many points is that? It's a lot of points. Um, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight points, six sides, um, that makes up a cube. So that's what the geometry is. It's like, how many points are we actually drawing in this shape? Um, and so we fill that in and we get our cube. And that's what the material is. Uh, the material is like the outside of the of the geometry um, or the mesh that reflects light. So you can think of the material as kind of being like a t-shirt or something that you would wear. Like your body in, is kind of like the skeleton of like where the shape is. And then a t-shirt or like, uh, you know, your, something that you might wear is like the material. It's the color and how it reflects light. So light is a big topic in 3D stuff that we won't get into today, but just to mention quickly that in a 3D world, the only th reason you can see stuff is because it reflects light. Um, and so a lot of the stuff we do in 3D is in reference to, to how it works with light. Um, so yeah, that so we have the geometry and the material, and that makes a mesh. Uh, so we're gonna start with our geometry. Um, and actually I should just grab this from over here. So our geometry is a box geometry. So we're just going to make a box. And so we have, again, it looks pretty much the same as our other lines of code. We have a geometry. It's a new three dot box geometry to create a box. And it's just going to be uh, one unit wide, one unit tall, and one unit uh, in depth. So those three values are the size x, y and z and when we make a box we just have to tell it how big we want it to be and we do it by using uh, those values so next we make our material this is the color uh, of the box and how it reflects light um, and so we say constant material is new 3js mesh basic material there's a lot of different types of materials um, so if you look in the documentation and just type in material you can see the different types of materials and the difference in them is how they reflect light. And so we're not even really getting to light today. So we're just gonna use a basic material, um, which means that it doesn't even really reflect light. It just has a color. And so our mesh basic material has a parameter, which is the color. And you can see this might look a little weird, but it might also look familiar. This is a hex value, like what we have in uh, CSS, but it's not using it as a string um, with quotation marks or just the value. It's actually a hex number, which we can express in JavaScript if we start with zero and then an X. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that would work with any color that we wanted to use. So if I go to HTML color codes, and look at hex values. Um, so here's like a random color and here's a hex value. I can actually copy that value and it'll work, but I just put it after the OX. So that's ADFCAB. Um, so instead of their default color, let's use that ADFCAB and we'll get that green color once we get our material. Okay, so now finally we have our mesh. So we say constant, oops constant mesh equals um, new yeah i have a question for yeah. the color tag can you use hashtags and rgba attributes um like you, can you can actually you can use uh like you can set the color using rgb um you can't do it from here uh but you can set a color um, after you create the material, you can say something like material.color.set, and then you can use RGB, but it's not in zero to 255, it's in zero to one. So for example, if you wanted to make like blue, you would say like zero, zero, one or something like that. Um, so there's a, there's, there's a few like different ways that you work with 3JS that can be kind of confusing at first. So I'll kind of introduce them uh, bit by bit. Um, but for now, you can use any hex color uh, just by using color and then colon and then zero x 
and then and then the hex value for the color. And usually these are capitalized, so I'll just oops capitalize it. Sorry, what were you gonna say? So basically, only hex the decimal values first. For now, yeah, but you can use RGB. Uh, uh, it with with different syntax. Um, I'll go over that eventually. Okay. Yeah. Um, so now we add our mesh, which is just a combination of the geometry and the material. Oh, and they actually call it cube here. So let's do that. We'll call it cube. Um, so that's a three dot mesh, and that just puts the geometry and the material together. And that's kind of useful because you could reuse the same box with different materials, or um, you could use the same material on a bunch of different shapes. Um, so that's why we kind of separate the geometry from the material. Um, so next, uh, we just add this cube into our scene. So we've created a cube, but it won't show up until our scene until we add it. So we say scene.add and then put the cube in there. OK, so we're actually just about ready to render our scene. Um, but we're going to change one thing. And I'm going to go over why first. OK, so we're going to say camera.position.z equals 5. And so the reason that we're going to do that, and I'm going to put this next to the camera because I like to organize stuff next to each other. So I'm going to say camera.position.z equals 5. And so why would we do that? The reason we have to do that is if we just throw a bunch of stuff into the scene and don't set the position, they're going to be overlapping. And that's going to create a problem where basically what's going to happen. So if we imagine our scene, um, we have uh, our cube is at 0, 0, 0. So if our scene is like x, y, oh, that was pretty bad. Let's see if I can draw that a little straighter. OK and z, and we have a cube at 0, 0, 0, our cube is going to be like here, basically. I'm not really that good at drawing in 3D. Oh, boy. Uh, OK, just pretend I drew this in 3D. Here's our cube. Um, and actually, it's going to be centered, so it's going to be like that. So to see our cube, we have to be basically somewhere else in the scene. And if we don't change the position of our camera, then our camera is also going to be right at 0, 0. So our camera is going to be inside of our cube. And so it won't be able to see the cube because it'll be looking out of the cube. So the way that we fix that is we drag the camera over here to uh, z equals 5. So then the camera will be looking towards the cube uh, and not like you know somewhere else. Um, so now we can actually render our scene. So this is pretty exciting. It only took us a, an hour to do this, um, but I've been explaining everything in a lot of detail. So um, uh, that's why it's taking a while. Anyway, so we're going to render our scene. Uh, I'm going to go over this in a second, but let's just render it first. So let's say um, render dot render. And so when we want to render a scene, we use the render and we say dot render, and then we give it the scene. Uh, and I have to put a space here because it's 3JS, and I give it the camera. So it knows what to render and from what perspective. And so now, finally, we should be able to see a scene. There we go. There's our cube. It looks like a square because our camera is facing the cube, uh, but that is our cube. OK, so let's see if we can change our perspective a little bit. Um, so let's also change the camera position. Let's say camera position dot x equals 5. OK, so now if I reload the scene, so our cube moved, right? So let's. this is where it can get really tricky. So our cube, even though we moved our camera, our cube looks like it moved over here. What just happened? OK. Our cube looked like it moved over here, and then the geometry changed a little bit. We can see there's an edge here. It's hard to see because we don't have lighting, but you can see that the, the cube has straight lines, and then it kind of goes in here. So we can start to see a little bit of that cube geometry. So even though we move the camera, it looks like the cube moved. What really happened was when we first looked at our scene, this is a top-down view. Um, so here's x going this way, and here's z going this way. So here is our camera, and here is our cube. 
and it looked like a flat square because our camera was looking directly at it. And then we moved our camera over here. But keep in mind, the camera is still looking straight ahead. And so now, since the camera moved, but we're, we are the camera, essentially, it looks like the cube moved this way. And so now what we're seeing is this angle on the cube, even though what really happened was that we moved the camera. So what we might want to do, and there's a really easy way to do this, is turn our camera to look at the cube. So there's an easy way to do this in uh, 3JS, which is not part of this tutorial, uh, but I just want to show you guys because otherwise it can get really annoying. So I'm going to go back to my script. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say camera.look at, and I'm going to make our camera look at our cube. But it doesn't know what the cube is. Um, it can only look at positions. So I'm going to say cube.position. And I'll talk a little bit more about positions uh, next week. OK, so we're going to say camera.look at cube.position. And now when I reload the scene, OK, now it looks like our camera moved around the cube. So our cube is still in the middle, um, but our camera kind of moved around. Um, so now if I move the camera in different positions, like if I say, let's move it up now, I can say camera.position.y equals 5. Now when I reload, so now I can see all three sides of the cube. And again, it's hard to see because um, you know we don't have lighting right now, which we'll add next week. But you can see this is the edge, this is the edge, this is the edge. Um, so you can start to see the geometry of that cube. OK, so next thing that we want to do, let's uh, comment out these lines. So I'm just hitting Control forward slash to comment those out. Um, and now we're going to add some animation. That's the last little bit of this tutorial. So right now, when we just call render once, it literally just renders a scene once, and then it's done. It's not doing anything else. So it can't change. Um, and if we want to have like a 3D scene that we can like move around and animate, we need to be rendering all the time. This is like our draw function in P5, except instead of like we do in P5, we're actually just writing this ourselves. So I'm going to copy this bit of code and replace our render with this. So what this is doing is it's creating a new function called animate that controls our scene animation. And then we just call it once down here to get started. But then it actually calls itself using this special function called request animation frame, which plugs into the browser's uh, graphics capabilities so that it only renders when the browser is rendering instead of just kind of like randomly when it whenever it happens. And then this is the same line of code, render.render, .render, and we have our scene, and we have our camera. So when we first start this, nothing is going to change. It's going to look exactly the same, because it's rendering the same thing over and over again. But now, if we want to create animation, we can. So we're going to create a really simple animation that they show us how to do here. We're just going to rotate our cube. Um, and the reason I think they do this is because if you're just rotating the cube, it's not going to like disappear off the screen or anything like that. So it can just rotate forever. So inside of my uh, animate function, um, before I render the scene, I'm just going to update the cube. So I'm going to say cube.rotation.x. And I'm just going to add a very small amount to this because rotation is measured in radians, which is like pi. So pi, which is uh, 3.14, is like half a rotation. So if I, if I did like 1 or something like that, it would be rotating crazy fast. So I'm just going to do 0 0.01 just to do a slow rotation. And so now if I reload the scene, we see we get animation. Again, without lighting, it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on, but hopefully you guys can see that animation. Let's actually move our camera a little bit closer. Uh, let's go to Z is 2. Um, so we'll see that animation a little bit closer up. OK, there's our nice cube. See the animation. You might be wondering uh, why it's animating the way it is. And so let's talk about that real quick. So remember, y is up, x is uh, left and right, and then z is like coming towards us. And since we're rotating on x, what it's doing is it's actually rotating around this axis, which is why it looks like it's rotating at us. 
as opposed to like in P5, you would think that if you were in P5 and you rotated around X, you would think it would be going around like that. Um, but it's actually coming towards us because we have the Z axis now. Um, okay, so let's add one more part to our animation and then we will be done with this uh, intro tutorial. So I'm gonna say- oh, Wait, Professor, so how would we make it rotate to the other side? if I wanted to rotate away from us? Oh, good question. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm saying X and then I'm adding 0 0.01. And so uh, basically what that looks like is if I, have my, if I have my cube here and let's say this is the X axis, I'm just rotating like this way, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. If I want to go the other way, I just have to do subtraction instead of multiplication. Um, so I can say minus equals 0 0.01, and so now it'll go the other way. Or okay. another way that you might see this written is times negative one, so that you can keep this plus and know that it's going backwards based on the negative sign here. Um, that's another way to do it, which like you may see more often. Mm, okay. Um, so then we can rotate on the y as well. So let's say y plus equals 0 0.1. And now we're going to be rotating on two axes. And so now we see a lot more of the geometry of the cube. So that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of like getting started. So um, that's a lot of information. We're going to go into some more stuff next week in detail um and we're going to also uh talk a little bit about lighting which is like this whole other aspect of 3d stuff that requires a lot of explanation but um, eventually we'll be able to make really cool looking scenes so hopefully it'll be worth it um in the meantime um i'm going to send you guys a link to this code you can uh remix it or just copy and paste it into your own project if you want to get started using it um, and playing around with different things. So what I would suggest doing is just like kind of playing around with some of the different values here already. So like the color value here, you could play around with the geometry. Like what if I change like this to a five? How does that change the uh, dimensions of the cube? It makes it really, really long. Um, now it's, notice like when my camera starts to clip inside the cube, the, you don't see anything because in 3D geometry, uh, there's nothing on the inside. It only paints stuff on the outside by default. You can change that, but that's the default. Um, so you can play around with those numbers. You can add more geometries. Um, so you can see it, it does require like three lines to add a geometry. And we're going to make that look a little bit simpler in the future. But if I wanted to add a second cube, um, what I could do is I could actually say like constant cube two equals new three dot mesh. And I can use the same geometry and the same material, but now I have a different cube, so I can put it somewhere else. So I can say cube two dot position. And usually uh, you can say like dot position or dot rotation dot X, but I can also set all three. So I can like say set, and let's put this cube, uh, for, let's put this, how are we gonna be able to see it? Let's put it to the right. So let's put it at 2x and 2y and 0z. And so it sh should be up and to the right from our original cube. Uh, and I just have to add it to the scene. Scene.add cube2. OK, so now, OK, it's hard to see. Let's move our camera back a little bit. Uh, let's say camera is 5. OK, so now I have another cube in my scene. It's not rotating because I didn't add the rotation. But um, so you can start to add more stuff that way. Um, if you want to look at other shapes, uh, you could go to um, look at, let's see, if I type in shape, no, that doesn't. Uh, yeah, if I type in geometry, yeah, you can see all the shapes if you type in geometry. So there's a box, capsule, circle. Um, all these different things that you could try adding in. There's also examples of all this stuff. So if I go to examples and I have geometry and I click here, you can see all these different shapes. I can click on this little code thing and look at some of the code in here. 
Um, but I'll go over this stuff more uh, later. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the basics. Um, so let me, I'm going to save this and I'm going to go to my terminal and just commit what I've made so far. And let's see. So I'm going to clear my terminal, get status. Oh, wow. Okay. That's really weird. So it's still just like adding, it added another, okay, that's really weird. I need to check my settings because that wasn't happening before. Anyway, um, I'm going to send you guys a link to this uh, so you can look at it. You can remix it. So if you click remix, uh, you'll make a new copy of the um, of that project that you can add your own code to or play around with. Um, or you can just copy and paste the code into your own project. Um, so yeah, let me stop recording.